Good evening and welcome to our second in our series of workshops for our tech cafes. This event is a collaboration between the division or well, the divisions of information technology, student support and intervention, and the division of curriculum and instruction. Next slide, please. I'd like to take a moment just to tell you just a little bit about the work of the parent and family engagement team. We provide supports to families and schools who need assistance accessing schools and district resources, addressing concerns, and building skills to be strong partners in their students' education. We are dedicated to developing, e developing educated, engaged, and empowered parents and staff who are partners in creating great schools in every region. Family engagement resources and supports are, are available through the Department of Parent and Family Engagement and the Title I Office of Federal Programs Regional Parent Centers. Next slide, please. Just wanted to take a moment to introduce to you the Parent and Family Engagement Team. Our leader, Dr. Vasan Tinsley, the Deputy Superintendent for Support and Intervention. I am Marcia Coward, the Parent and Family Engagement Manager, and there are six parent center, parent liaisons at the district level, my, I'm sorry, that supports the work of the family engagement team. Next slide, please. Meet the Title I Parent Center facilitators. There is a parent center that is funded by Title I in every region. So you will find additional supports that reside in each of those centers. And those centers are managed by Region 1, Angelica Rosso, and that center is located at Cross Keys High School. Mr. Cleveland Dollison is the Region 2 Parent Center Facilitator, and his center is located at Tucker High School. Ms. Victoria Turner, Region 3 Center Location, Stevenson Middle School. And Mr. Joseph Benford, Region 4 Center currently at Stevenson High School, Middle School as well. And for Region 5, Ms. Tamisha Favors, her center is located at Miller Grove, Middle School, Ms. Demetra Perkett Brown, Region 6, Center Location, Columbia High School, and Ms. Annette Ford, Region 7, at Cedar Grove Middle School. Know that these individuals are ready and willing to help you with all of your parent needs. Next slide. To maximize this webinar, it is best that you log in using a laptop or a computer, which I'm sure you already have if you're online with us. If you have questions, please type them in the Q&A section. The chat is being monitored by members of the instructional technology team, as well as the Title I Parent Center facilitators. Questions are being recorded. Some answers will be provided in the chat or during the Q&A. Next slide. Meet the information technology team. These are the stars for these webinars because they are the experts who are working with these systems every day, all day long. Ms. Riza Azar for Region 1, Laura Crate, Region 2. Region 3 is vacant, but I'm sure they're being serviced. Region 4, Jasmine Harris. Region 5, Terry Webb. Region 6, Dwayne Johnson and Region 5, Angela Johnson. Angela will be our presenter for this evening. Next slide. Webinar outcomes. At the end of this session, you will understand the role of family engagement in education, understand how to access Verge from district website or the student, your student's Chromebook, and understand how students navigate through Verge. So without further ado, I will turn this over to Ms. Angela Johnson, who will be our presenter for this evening. Hello, everyone. I'm going to take over while um, we're waiting on our presenter. So we are talking about Verge today, and Verge is our learning management system. 
Verge is the DCSD approved learning management system, and this tool allows our teachers and our students to seamlessly collaborate in a safe and virtual learning environment. Teachers can actually personalize learning in our Verge environment. We have in our department um, in uh, throughout DeKalb, we have a website and we have in this website, it's called our virtual learning support for students. And the address is right here on the screen. It's www.dekalbschoolsga.org slash virtual dash learning dash support. All right, so I have been charged with the awesome task of walking you through the life of one of our awesome students. In this particular scenario, our student is Jane. So I'm going to tell you what I would tell Jane to do if she needed to be able to access and navigate to Verge. One way that Jane can get to Verge is by opening up her Chromebook, logging into her Chromebook, and looking down at the bottom bottom portion of that monitor and that's called a shelf. When she looks down there, she should see a little icon that looks like the letter V. And so Jane can actually just click on that letter V if she has a district device and she can launch right into Verge. But suppose Jane does not have a device, suppose Jane opted to use her own device. Then what I would tell Jane is, Jane, I need you to go to the Cab County School District's website. And when you get there, I need you to scroll down to the very bottom of the screen. And then what I want you to do is I want you to click on the little rocket. And that's going to open up Launchpad for Jane. And then I'm going to tell Jane, log in with your Active Directory account. And so she's going to type in all those numbers, so S number, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, followed by her student number. And then she's going to type in the password. Now, I'm not going to do that because I've actually already logged in. But that is what I would tell Jane. Either Jane, you're going to log in on your Chromebook to Verge, or you're going to log in through the district's website. When Jane launches Verge, she's going to land on DeKalb County School District's homepage. Now, this is a page that we use to shoot information out to our students, our staff, and all employees district-wide. So when we really need to give them some little nibbits and little tidbits of information, this is where we're going to post that information. So if I scroll down, you will see some of the information that has been shared with our students all the way up to the superintendent of schools. At the very top is a black grayish color bar. That is the menu bar for the application. So there are a few features I want to show you on the bar. So I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to start with courses. Courses is going to become a very important place to hang out. I'm going to scroll all the way over to the right hand side and then I notice that I have two little icons here. One is a bell and one is a speech bubble. The bell has a little orange circle on it with a number inside and that lets me know that my teacher might have done something here. She's trying to notify me that a change has been made. The one to the very right is the speech bubble and it has a number four, which lets Jane know that mm, I might need to check this because one of my teachers might be trying to tell me something. So all Jane needs to do is to click on the speech bubble. And when she does that, it opens up this menu here that allows her to see the messages that have been sent to her. So there's a message here from me, from Angela. And it says, ah, my name is Miss Johnson. I would be your science teacher for this school year. And yes, we're going to have a super, super, super time. 
Now, I'm hoping that all the teachers send such fabulous messages out. But again, this is where they're going to be sending messages to your student. To the very, very right hand side, you will see there's Jane's name. So if you're peeping over the shoulder of your student and you notice that, um, sweetie pie, that's not your name, then you need to let us know because they may accidentally have logged in as one of your other kids or mistakenly logged in as one of their friends. So their name should appear on that black menu bar. Again, this black menu bar is gonna become a very important thing in the lives of your students. So I did not tell you about courses. I left courses off intentionally. When Jane clicks on courses, she's going to get a drop down menu of courses. The first course in the list is the fabulous science class. So Jane knows that science is going to be held tomorrow. So let me go and see what Mrs. Johnson has posted for science today. So she's going to click on science. You might have noticed a change. Not only does Jane have a black menu bar, which is a menu bar for the software, Jane also has a menu bar for her class. Some of the teachers have set up a course dashboard. And on that course dashboard, the teachers are providing you and Jane with important information. Some of that information pertains to how you can get in touch with them, when their virtual office hours will be, and their phone numbers, tutorial times, and some of the teachers have posted their course syllabus. In addition to that, many of our schools have chosen to put the learning for the week. I love when schools put the learning for the week because I have a grandson who I take responsibility for, and this learning for the week is a win-win in my life. In the learning for the week, it lets me know what is going to occur during the week. So for me as a grandparent, I just use it as a checkoff list. Again, this might not be the case in your school because certain schools had the opportunity to choose whether or not they were gonna open with a dashboard. Returning to the white menu bar. When the students click, they will notice that they have an overview. This is the overview page. Right now it's pretty boring, but if I scroll down, you will see that my teacher, Mrs. Johnson, that is me, has put up a little welcome back messages. So sometimes teachers, instead of having a science dashboard, might opt to announce information in using the overview page. If I go down just a little further, then I have plans. And you're probably thinking, what does that mean? Well, for some of our schools, they have opted to put the plans for the week. So here, if you look, you will see that it has Monday and then I have the date. And then next week, here's my date. These are the plans that my school is sharing with me for the next couple of weeks. So as a parent, I kind of can get a feel of what's going on in the life of my students. Now. In my little classroom, as you can tell, I don't have very much going on in the life of Angela's science class, but trust me, your schools have a lot going on. If I go down the white menu bar a little further and I select resources, this takes me to the digital content that my child's teacher has been preparing. So Jane is going to go here to find out what she needs to do. Sometimes, sometimes you might see lots of unit folders here. And then sometimes you will only see one unit folder. Again, this depends on the teacher. The teachers know how to turn those folders on and off. So just be aware of the fact that you may not see all of the folders. And then in some teachers' classrooms, you might see them all. So let's take a peek into the folder that says unit one. So if I look inside of unit one's folder, I see that there are some subfolders. 
So I'm going to keep drilling down. I can either drill down by selecting here, or I can drill down by selecting over in what we lovingly call the left navigational tree. So I can click over here and I can see all these awesome assignments that Mrs. Johnson has prepared for Jane to do. So let's recap what I've covered thus far just to make sure everybody knows. If Jane has her own personal device, she can just simply go to the Cap County School District's website, travel to the bottom, and click on Launchpad and Launch Verge from her launch pad. Again, once she gets here, she's going to land on the district page, but her teacher's class will be located under courses. So courses is going to become important and all Jane needs to do is to look for the name of that particular course. Again, if you go to the very end and you look and you see that there's a number there, you know that Jane has messages that she needs to read. So you can just ask Jane, hey Jane, I noticed that you have a three there. Let's check those messages out. And if you see anything on the bell, you know that there's a notification, meaning that someone has changed some digital content. Again, let's recap that little white menu bar, which is the course menu bar. If your student selects overview, and you scroll down to the very bottom, then you will get to see some messages that your student might have sent to you. I mean, that the teacher may have sent. And then if you go up to the very top and you click on resources, you can actually see all the digital content. If you want to drill down just a little further, you can simply select unit folder from here or you can select the unit folder from here. All right, let's go inside one of these folders. We're going to travel inside Ms. Johnson's bookworms and I'm going to scroll down and I am going to select an assignment. This very first assignment sounds pretty interesting, so I'm going to pick it. This is an assignment that Jane needs to submit. So if I scroll down to the very bottom of the page, it will tell me the things that Jane needs, what activities she needs to do. But when I get to the very bottom of the page, there is an answer assignment button. This is how Jane is going to submit her assignment. She's going to click on the answer assignment button. And if it is a response that she needs to make, all she needs to do is type in this box. If there's an attachment, then all she needs to do is select add a file and navigate to the location of that particular document. And once she's done that, easy peasy, all Jane needs to do is click this button here that says submit and it's turned into her teacher. Usually the students get a little like, oh my gosh, did I really turn it in? The answer is yes, they did. Up at the very top, you will see it says your answer not corrected. So the student knows that the teacher hasn't picked it up and evaluated it, but they submitted it. It even gives them the time and the date. Now, as long as their teacher hasn't picked the assignment up and as long as they look up here and see not corrected, the student can actually go back in and make edits to that assignment. But once the teacher picks it up, it is a done deal. I'm gonna resubmit this assignment and I'm gonna let it hang out for a little while. Again, this is another example, but in this particular example, it's not corrected, but Jane has turned in an attachment with this one. It's the same ice cream assignment. I just simply duplicated it. 
So again, in this particular example, Jane can go in, hit edit, and make changes like to this sentence right here, which makes absolutely no sense. Let's take a look at her Charlotte's Web assignment. So if I scroll down to the very bottom, again, this is an opportunity for Jane to turn this assignment into her teacher for a grade. Sometimes our teachers give our students discussion questions and they look like this. Notice the icon change. The icon in the one that uh, Jane had to turn in was a blue and a red box. The icon for discussions is two speech bubbles. So in this particular assignment, the students are going to listen to something and then they're going to scroll down here, start a new thread and respond. Once again, anytime they see that little green button, they know that that is how they're going to either submit or save their discussion piece. Sometimes, and I don't know if I have anything on this page, but sometimes our teachers don't want kids to turn in anything. What they really want is just to be able to provide them with content. So they will create a page that looks like this. Again, notice that the icons have changed. Now it is orange, purple, and blue. I'm simply trying to provide Jane with content now. I don't need her to give me anything back. I simply need her to look at this brain pop video in this case. All right, going down the menu bar just a little bit further, we're well, actually what we're going to do is we're going to backtrack and we're going to go back over to overview. Under overview, there is something here that I think that you guys are going to love. And it is over on the far right hand side. It's called task. So for those teachers who did not create the wonderful little um, the little um, learning for the week, you can always go to the task section in Verge. Here under the task section, you will see that Jane has some overdue assignments because they're gonna populate that way. This assignment was due on, let me see, August 17th. Hey Jane, do you need any help with this assignment? It's overdue. So they're gonna see, as a parent, you're gonna see it and they can see it. If you're looking over their shoulders, you will see it. If you scroll down just a tad further, you see some assignments that are due, let me see, tomorrow. So Jane, you got 11.59 deadline. The deadline is right here. The due date is right here. Jane, you've got to get this done. It is due tomorrow. So if I scroll back up to the very top, I can click on complete it. These are all the assignments that Jane has submitted. So if you're like me, and you've got that little checklist for your kiddos or for me, my grandchild, and you're trying to check it all off to make sure they turned it in for the week, completed is a good place for you to go. So under completed, you're going to be able to see that this assignment right here was not corrected. And if I scroll down, look, Jane made a 100 on this assignment, so you know we get to go out for for real ice cream instead of the pretend one on the computer. And if I scroll down a little bit more, I can see that she completed the checkpoint. So as a parent, you're able to see the things that are currently active and the things that Jane has actually submitted. The final thing that I want to show you is right here under follow up and reports. So the one thing we're going to zero in on is the grade book. So all of our students inside of this application have a little grade book. It only shows their grade. Notice the only student I see here is Jane. So I can scroll through this and see how Jane is doing. 
uh, Jane, this is a 2.5. We need to work on that. Is there something you didn't understand? You can scroll through these things and see any comments the teachers may have made, any things that are late and things of that nature. Again, it is under follow up and reports, and then you're going to select gradebook. Let's recap one more time. Jane is in. She knows she's in Ms. Johnson's science class. So what does Jane need to do? Jane needs to do an assignment, one of these 13 assignments. So I'm going to, again, select this very first one. Well, maybe not because we've done that one. Uh, let's do Charlotte's Web. Scroll down to the bottom and then she's going to click the box that says answer assignment. Going back to assignment number one. Looking at this assignment, Jane knows that her teacher has not picked this assignment up for an evaluation. So she knows she can go back and she can edit it. And then click submit again to turn it back in. On the left navigational bar again, this is a discussion question, and we know that by the icon, the student will only need to go down to start a new thread, and they can turn that assignment in as well. And then the final example was on Brain Pop, where teachers are not asking them to give them anything back, they're simply sharing information with them. So they're able to go in and they're able to select that particular content and it will display whatever the teacher has decided. It could be a PowerPoint. It could be a handout. It could be multiple things. But they, you will know that it's just something the teacher is trying to share with them, again, by the icon. And then if you just want to get an idea of, I kind of had that little checklist, you're clicking on Overview. Again, it's going to fall here under Active First. You're going to be able to see anything that's overdue, things that are due tomorrow, and things that have no deadline. So Jane has lots of assignments in here that don't have a deadline. And then if you click on complete it, you'll be able to see the grades for Jane. Again, you're gonna be peeping over the shoulders of Jane and you're gonna be like, Jane, let me see your account. Let me see how you did on this. And you can just kind of get an idea of what is going on in the life of your student. And then finally, under follow up and reports, you can select the grade book and on the grade book you're able to navigate through and see the assignments that she submitted, the dates and whether or not, see how this says no deadline? And you can go through them and see them in that form and fashion also. And that is how you navigate Verge. So Risa and Dwayne, I am checking in with you guys for questions from the families. Okay, hold on just one minute. It's okay. Angela, somebody had a question about um, contacting a teacher through Verge. What would be the best way to do that? So just like Jane's teacher can reach out to Jane. If <laughs> it's funny they should ask that because I sent a message to Alex teacher today. <laughs> you can also do the same thing. I was, you know, watching Alex do a few things and I was like, I'm gonna send your teacher a note. And so I clicked here and you would select new. And then you simply will type in, I only know a couple of teachers in the district, so I'm, you know my favorite person, Risa, Simone. <laughs> so you would type in yeah. the name of the teacher that you're looking for, and then you would type the message. Now for Alex this morning, I simply said, this is Alex's grandmother and I have a question. So you would do the same thing, and then you would click send. Angela, would you explain how Verge is connected to Infinite Campus, please? Well, I, now this is the tricky part, whoever asked that question. 
It depends on the teachers involved. So currently we have it set up so that it gives a great pushback, but the teachers have to go in and they have to transfer the grades. So um, let me go back up here to my little science class. So in Jane's little grade book, all these grades that came out as numerical values, Jane's teachers is able to take those grades and transfer them back into Infinite Campus. And also the um, great that there was a question about um, the name of um verge versus it's learning um if you would and then launch pad then all right so we call it lovingly verge and this is what i usually tell people verge powered by it's learning so we call it verge in decap county school district but it's being powered by it's learning so in actuality they are the same applications when somebody wants when the parent wants to know what the student has to do for an assignment um do you want to reiterate that it is in where the location where they can see if they have to turn in an assignment or um, what they have to turn in in verge okay can you ask that again so showing where the tasks are again oh Okay, so on the white menu bar, which is the menu bar for the course, what they want to do is select overview. So Jane would select overview. And then over in this grayish area, so you got this, this large white colored area on your left where teachers can post announcements and various other things. Then you have a smaller grayish area. So the smaller grayish, grayish area is the task area. So that is where you can see the task and it will be divided into little groups. The overdue things, things that are late, the things that are coming up really fast and then things that have no deadlines associated with them. If you click on complete it, you can see the things that your student has submitted. So it's either active or completed. And under active, you can look at the overdue by selecting the little drop down menus and what have you. Okay, well, one more from what I see, the rest are, um, you've basically explained about the, how they get into Verge using the password, like what their password, um, this question is, how do we know what our child's password and login is for Verge? It is the same login the student uses to get into that desk um, Chromebooks. It's the exact same thing. Unfortunately, Jane is not really a student, so I can't. Well, you know what? I'm going to log out of Jane, but I just want you to know that Jane is not really a DeKalb County School District student. She's my made up student, which is why she never does any work. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. So to get into Verge, what they're going to do is they're going to log in right here where it says log in with the Cap County School District account. So they're going to click on this button. I'm not going to do it because again, Jane is not really a real student. Jane logs in on this side. They're going to click on this button and then it's going to ask them for the same information that you see on the left side. It's going to ask them for their username and password if they have not already logged into the system. Now, if they've already logged into their Chromebook, it's a single sign on. So all they need to do is click Verge and it will launch. But to answer your question, their username is the same username and password they will log into their computers with. Is that it, Risa? Just one more. If they want to attach something to an assignment that they like a picture or something. Um, did you, you want me to show you what Jane would do? Yes, let me let's see what Jane would do. Please. OK, Jane, Jane is really working hard today. 
It's the most work Jane has done all year. Uh, here we go. So we're in here and we're going to click on, um, let me find something that Jane can do. We're going back to the ice cream. Um, so the question was whether they want me to put Risa here, hon honey, sweetie. <laughs> so they wanted to know, so like say if they had a picture that they wanted, uh, like a, from their phone or something, that, or a picture saved somewhere and they wanted to upload that into the assignment, where would they do that? All right, so, so Jane, okay, just for the record, every once in a while, parents, this will come up. So you're going to need to tell your students to click on more options. Every once in a while, it will look like this. So remember, if it looks like this, you just need to tell your kiddos to click on more options. Now, this brings up that, that typical menu bar that people are used to seeing. So if your student needs to add an image, they can actually go down here to add a file. They can navigate right here to files. And that's going to open up the desktop. And um, let me see if I got oh, images. So I'm going to turn in this picture of Pi. And I'm going to add it. And it's going to fall right here for Jane to submit. If the student decides, oh, that's the wrong picture. They can go over here, click this X, and get rid of it. If they want to add a, a different picture, an additional one, they can simply go back, click on Add Files, and let's say this time the student would like to add Christopher Columbus. And now they have two images, and now all they need to do is select Submit. And that is how you're going to attach those images. And now you see them. Jane has two images right there ready for her teacher to evaluate. Great. Thank you, Angela. You um, are absolutely welcome. We are good. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and bring back up the PowerPoint. I'm going to share All that. Right. Go that right okay? ahead. You may have the screen. Okay. Here. You will just tell me when to move the screen, okay? You may, you may, Risa, you can, you can move it. I've already stopped sharing. Yeah. Huh? All right, parents, there are a few little tidbits that we want you to be familiar with from information technology, from our hearts to yours. One of the things that we need you to do is to make sure your students do a device wellness check. So if they haven't done that, we need you to make sure that happens in their lives. So all you need to do is to go to the virtual learning support website on DeKalb County School District's website. All right, Risa Love, you can change the slide. In addition to that, if your student needs a device, it is important that you go to digital dream to our digital dreamers website and complete the application the agreement and everything for your student to receive a device and this includes those awesome hotspots that are available to our students as well all right Lisa. and of course if you have technical support 
We had had the best time talking to some of our awesome parents today. So if you have issues or if you just need a quick how to, what did Angela say about uploading that document into Verge? You can always visit this wonderful website here that we've made just for you and your student. It is a virtual learning support for students website. It contains lots of helpful information, including how to videos and a place for you to submit help desk tickets it just in case you might need additional support. All right, and then it over to you guys. Great job, Angela. Even though I don't have students in school anymore, I learned a whole lot and I took a lot of great notes so that if anybody ever called me, I know which websites to direct them to for more technical support. So that was an awesome job. Parents, just so you know, our next workshop is going to be next Thursday, which is the 27th, and that will be on Infinite Campus, plugging into Parent Portal. I know that that is something that a lot of you are waiting for because that is the lifeline. Infinite Campus is the lifeline and the connection between your schools and your homes. So we'll make sure that that is an exciting time. Hopefully we won't have a storm like we had today that just keeps passing over. So if there are no further questions, I would say. Be safe. Stay well. And thank you for joining us for this Tech Cafe.